And so, as Dave says, my name is Mariah. I've been attending a New Life for the past 13 years now with my family who has seated somewhere in the background there. Um, and uh, what else? My son was baptized last week. I'm very, very proud of that. Uh, it was a very, thank you, very emotional moment for me, but also I know a significant milestone in his life, and uh, I give God all the praise and all the glory. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at, I think, one of the last in the series of The Way. And today we're going to be looking at the way of protection. So could you say to your neighbor, the way of protection? Okay, and today I'm afraid it's not going to be flying all over the place. Today we're doing a deep dive. So say to your neighbor, we're going deep today. <laughs> Today's deep. Lots of scriptures. So try and keep up, lots of um, insights, some stories and practical tips around a whole range of areas. Um, so in terms of, of protection really, I wanted to, before I go into this, say that I was driving to, to work, yeah, I guess it is kind of work, driving to church today and the Holy Spirit was saying to me, I want us to have an altar call for two types of people in the service today. The first one is um, a group of us in the service today who I would say are, have dropped the ball. And when the Holy Spirit was talking to me, he said, we've dropped the ball in terms of working with him to protect our minds and our lives through that way. So he wants you to um, identify, and I believe he's already speaking to you now as you're sitting there, if you're the one or if you are part of that group, then please, we'd love you to come forward later on. I'm hoping I can finish as quickly as possible and get up a, an altar call here. And then the second group of people are people who are new in faith and have been struggling with this whole issue of how do I work with, with the Holy Spirit in terms of managing what comes in and what goes out of my mind. So these are the two people that, the two groups of people that I'd love you to please come up um, with us. And I want to encourage this first group that look, even if you have dropped that ball, the Holy Spirit is calling to you today and saying to you, you need to pick it up again. Just a quick one, I was at my daughter's sports day um, earlier this week, at about, uh, they were like year two, so like five to seven years, and they had like 50 yards to run. And there was this tiny little girl, blonde girl, and my, my daughter's quite, she's quite muscular and tall, and so were the others in that line. And the referee said go, and everybody started running. And this little blonde girl ran, I think, about 25 meters, and kid you not, both her shoes flew off. I don't know how it happened, but everybody else continued. And what would you expect of a five-year-old? Probably break down in tears, go running for mama, no, she went right back to where those shoes were, picked them up, put them on, and finished the race. So that's what God is expecting of us today. Go back to where you dropped your shoes, put them on, and finish. Yeah? Praise God. So, okay, um, I'm going to start off with our text for today, which is John 17, please. And I'd like us to try and read it together if we can. I'm going to try and move out of the way. Um, so, can everybody see? Okay, try and work with me. I'll read it and then you can try your, your best without a microphone. So, um, verse 11 says, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave to me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe. By, by that name you gave me, none has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. So I guess my question is, what is that scripture saying to us about protection? Jesus was very clear when he was praying to the Father that whilst he was here, he protected us. He protected his, his children, his disciples, those who were following him. And he wanted a situation whereby 
when he went to be with the Father, when he, you know, ascended, was killed, and then arose and ascended, that we would continue that trail of um, that culture of learning how to protect ourselves. So this, the issue is, or the question is, how did Jesus protect them in those days? And I remember certain scriptures where Jesus, if you remember too, just shout out, when he sent them out two by two, do you remember that? When he sent them out and he'd say, if you go to a city um, and you're preaching and they don't receive you, just shake the dust off your feet. Don't touch anything, don't eat anything, move on to the next um, village or city or, or region. So that was a way, that was one of the ways Jesus protected them. He gave them instruction. He told them what to do in a hostile environment. And so when Jesus ascended and left, what was the key thing he left with us to aid us in that continuation of the journey? Who can shout out? Absolutely, you guys are on point this morning. You had your, is it Quaker Oats or Weetabix? Weetabix, thank you. So the Holy Spirit, he said he would leave the Holy Spirit to work with us in order to continue that culture of protection. And so when we look at the next slide, thank you. One of the key areas I felt that I wanted to talk about um, this morning were two things, but I'm gonna focus and deep dive on one. The first is the heart, and the second is the mind. Because, you know, we can have protection for all kinds of things, protection over our, our bodies, our health, our families. You can go anywhere with this. But I believe the Holy Spirit wanted me to zero in on this particular two areas, and specifically on the mind. And when we talk about the heart, what, what do we mean? What we're talking about is the control center, the control center of our lives. Has anybody watched that movie Inside Out? If you have, just give me a little wave. Okay, hey, people, are, you're going to the cinema, that's good. So basically, in that film, Inside Out, there was like a huge control panel. And by the way, this is um, a story of a young girl's life and what was going on in her mind as she grew from childhood into puberty, you know, and forward and so on. And there was a control panel, and there were certain emotions, I think it was anger, fear, and uh, envy, that were working that control panel. And each time one of the um, emotions went and touched the panel, the little girl would feel that emotion. But you see, just to make it a bit more pictorial, the heart is that panel. The heart is that operating center of who you are. Yeah, it's the life. When I look at, um, I think it was uh, Strong's Concordance, it talked about the heart being the strength and life of a Christian. So that's what the heart is. And what does the word say about the heart? One of the things it talks about is um, guarding our hearts and protecting our hearts in partnership with the Holy Spirit. And the scripture I have here in Colossians 3 talks about since we, as his children, have been raised with him, we must set our heart on things above. We must set our hearts on things above, things, spiritual things, things that he has spoken to us in his word. So that is one of the key ways of protecting ourselves from a whole range, a whole barrage of things in life. We must learn to set our eyes, to set our, um, uh, our hearts, rather, on things spiritual. And then the second area is the mind. So what is the mind? And this is where I really want us to go for that deep dive this morning. The mind is, uh, if you like, um, the best way I can describe it is like an orange. So you know you have an orange and you have, um, inside that orange you have little segments that make up that one orange. So when you look at that orange, it's whole, but then inside it has almost about seven or eight little slices, depending on whether it's a satsuma or whatever. So that is how the mind operates. The mind is a seed of the will, the emotions, the intellect. Yeah? So all these things make up the mind. And literally, what Jesus is saying to us is that the quality of life we live on earth, the quality of life we experience on earth is linked directly to the way our mind works. Now, my background and what I do for my business 
involves a lot of motivational speaking. It involves a lot of, you know, getting people to think right and, you know, see things right. But this is going deeper. We're in church. This is going deeper. What it looks at is um, using God's word to, and working with the Holy Spirit to, first of all, wash our minds from the way that we were raised, whether it was through, um, you know, the nature-nurture uh, discussion, and also using God's word to reset our minds. So there's almost a, a cleansing that needs to happen, and then there's a resetting of our minds, and then there's an elevation of the way we think. So in terms of protection, it's, it's a very, how do you say, it's a, a, a process that the word of God encourages us to engage in as we move towards becoming more Christ-like. So I think that the next thing I'd like to do is go through different aspects of how we can work with the Holy Spirit to do that. Thank you. Okay. So I want everybody to say after me, protecting my mind is my responsibility, but I can work with the Holy Spirit to get it done. So what are we saying? There are two key areas, and the way that I'm looking at it, there are two key areas we have to engage in as believers in order to get into this whole area of protection. Number one is going on the offensive, and number two is a defensive posture. And don't forget, offensive is not just, it's a, how do you say, it's a military word. It's an aggressive word. And I believe the Holy Spirit is saying to us this morning that in order to work with him to protect ourselves, we need to go on the offensive. We can't be allowing every single Tom, Dick, and Harry thought to come into our minds, to nest in our minds, and to germinate. Because if you think about it, thoughts are like seeds, right? So what happens when you maybe go to your allotment, I have a little allotment in my house, and you sprinkle some seeds, and you pour water, and the light comes in, what happens? Can anybody... Exactly, it grows, something grows. So every thought that runs through our mind and from what I've researched, and don't hold me to it, but I'll, you know, I'll say it, about 10,000 thoughts run through our minds per hour. So the rate at which things are moving through our minds is phenomenal. So the question is, with all that coming in, how do we make sure that the right things are staying and germinating. And even when I saw it, I thought, my goodness, how am I going to manage this? I mean, 10,000 thoughts. Imagine that amount of traffic. You don't even get that on a highway in, I don't know, Lagos. I don't know how many of us has, have been to Lagos. So there, it's a big deal. It's a big job. But what the Word of God says is that we have to be on the offensive. And what does that mean? Let's go into his Word and find out. So First Peter says, so roll up your sleeves. Get your head in the game. Be totally ready to receive the gift that is coming when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil, doing just what you feel like doing. You didn't know any better then, you do now. As obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life, a life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I am holy, be ye holy. So essentially, what is God's Spirit saying to us? We can't afford to be lazy. We can't afford to be in a situation where we're letting things go with what goes through our minds. And the question is, how do we work with the Holy Spirit to move through this? How do we work with the Holy Spirit to ensure that we are going on the offensive? And one of the things I wanted to share with you, and I did say we're going deep today, is something that's helped me through the years. I gave my life to Christ when I was, I think, about seven, so been around in the whole thing for a while. And there were certain times when I struggled, especially around my teenage years, and I had somebody who was discipling me. 
And the person, uh, the young gentleman who was my disciple at that time in youth church was saying to me, listen, what you've got to do is soak yourself in the word, especially if there are areas, and let me use this, if there are areas where you find there are strongholds. Now, strongholds are areas where there just seems to be that issue that you can't get past. And when I was young, mine was people-pleasing. I loved to be in the center of the crowd. I loved people to love me. And there were challenges I had with that because there were times when God's word would say, listen, this is not what I want from you, but my flesh and my, my whole being would want to go the opposite way. So I started to use God's word, the scriptures, and what God said about that situation to begin to almost create a filter in my mind. So if you think of a sieve, you know, when you're sort of sieving a, a lettuce, you know, you're washing lettuce or whatever, and you've got a sieve, and you put the water through, and all the, the, the bits you don't want come through the holes. That's what God's word did for my mind in that area. So I came to a position, and I'm telling you a story now in two minutes, which was over, like, goodness, 10, 15 years, where I'd be in a situation where my flesh would be pulling me in one way, and all of a sudden, the words that I had, um, how do you say, had uh, meditated on, studied with my disciple maker at that time, would come up. And that would then begin to guide what I would allow in my mind, which then resulted in how I behaved. So there is a key connection between God's word helping you to sieve out how you think and how you think then behaves or impacts on how you behave. Is everyone with me? Yes. Fantastic. So this is something we have to do aggressively. And I began to notice after about five years, this was real tough. I began to notice after about five years, I'd be sitting in a situation and even while I was in that situation, the Holy Spirit would begin to say, listen, this is what you say, this is what you don't say. If I said something that was um, amiss or, or not right or behaved in a way that was not right, immediately the Holy Spirit would retrace and, you know, help me realign myself. It didn't start that way. I had to do the work, put the work in, and then gradually he began to work with me on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm encouraging everyone here today who feels that, you know, this is such a huge area in your life that you can't overcome. He wants you to win because he knows when you elevate your life, when you elevate your, the, your thinking, your way of life automatically elevates. It goes up. Hallelujah. Amen. So the second area is around defense. Defense. So when we're offensive, when we're aggressive about taking control of our thoughts, yeah, taking control of our thoughts, being active on a day-to-day, -day, sometimes minute-by-minute -minute situation, then he wants us to go on the defense. Because there are all sorts of things that can happen. So, for example, um, I don't know, where you grew up, maybe there were situations where you were put down a lot. You know, you grew up in a place where there wasn't much love, there wasn't much honor, and so you grow up with that mindset of, okay, nobody really actually appreciates me. That's just one example. But there are many of these kinds of things that can happen to all of us. So not only is the Holy Spirit saying to us today, be on the offensive, he says, be on the defensive. And this, for me, links into areas of, um, how do I put it, areas of looking at how our mind works, our operating system. So has anybody heard of operating systems? I'm hoping I can use that, yeah. So do you remember when Windows came out? I mean, some of us are old enough to remember when there was DOS and when you used to press those orange things and then suddenly we moved from there, we moved to Windows 3 and then um, in Windows 3 you found that you could use different applications um, but then there was always that glitch, wasn't there? There was a time where it would seize up and then from Windows 3 it moved to Windows, can anybody remember? Five, I think, I'm hearing. So it moved to Windows 5, and you could use more apps. You could use, um, I think you could also go on the internet at that point, and then from Windows 5, it moved to 7, then it moved to 10, and then I think we're now at XP. What am I trying to say? 
the Holy Spirit wants us to take charge of what goes through our minds, but he wants us to change that mind that we had before we came to him. Because clearly God's word does say it. Thank you. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So Romans 12, 2 talks about it. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So Jesus Christ wants our lives to be transformed. And how does that happen? Through the renewing of our minds, the washing of our minds, the realignment of our minds through his word. Because at the end of the day, and I'm going to say this with all humility, a lot of us here, I believe, are Christians. We've given our lives to Christ for a while. But are there things that we are asking God for, that we want to see, that we want manifested, that actually we've been asking for years? And is it that God isn't powerful enough? Is it that there's no power in his word? No. A lot of the times, it's because of the way our minds are set. It's because of the operating system. So when we say, God, I believe you about this, there's something in the background running that system that says, actually, no, my mom let me down in this area, and my dad actually didn't do that, and my friend that I relied on didn't do this. So actually, there is that bit of doubt that is still there. So the Holy Spirit is saying to us today, as well as being offensive, we have to begin to work on that panel, on that operating system, on that culture that we've built up over the years and allow the word of God to transform us and to help us to live that transformed life. I'm going to tell you a story quickly because I know time is running out and I really want to do this all to call. I had a situation in my business about 10 years ago. I was very new into the whole thing. And um, I was working with a, a government organization where um, they wanted my company to come in and do a complete re revamp of staff because there were issues of sexual abuse, there were, is there were all sorts of nastiness in there. And these guys had been there for years. I mean, I'm talking of people who came into work when they were, I think, 20, and now they were like 45. They were comfortable. They didn't want to go. But the, the task was to come in and to, as they say, remove them through natural wastage. We all know what that means. And so, <laughs> and so I started that work with my team. And believe me, <laughs> there were, I think after about the fourth week there, I walked into the office that I was supposed to be in and opened my drawer, and there were notes there. We are going to kill you. You are going to die. Do you think you can get rid of us? Do you think you can dislodge us from this organization? And there would be people as I, would walk in, as I was walking through the halls of that office who'd give me notes saying the same thing. My mind came under so much attack. So it wasn't so much the bodily attack. It was the mental struggle of the change that was happening. And I knew, I said to myself, if I allowed this, I would probably be the one to have that nervous breakdown and leave that organization. So what did I do? I stepped up the reading of God's word the way that we've just discussed it now, but also I stepped up speaking his word over my mind, over my life. And I thank God, at the end of the day, I think it was about a seven-month project, we completed the mission, I left, I was completely fine, I you know, got through the, 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 the project successfully, and I believe that was God, because when I left the project, one of the ladies who was there, who was from the beginning but managed to stay, came to me, she called me, she said, look, do you know there were five other people before you that tried to do the same thing? One of them is no more. The four others left because of either nervous breakdown, something to do with mental breakdown. So that for me was a turning point in the way that I saw the importance of God's word and preserving the mind. So I want to encourage you today, and I've run out of time so I can't really do much more, I want to encourage you today that if you want to see God move in those areas you've been asking him, you've been praying about, I want you to take that courage and I want you to come out. And if I can ask the band to please come back or the piano, uh, somebody playing the piano, whoever, Kim, please help out. Um, and I'd like us to just take a few minutes 
and commit ourselves into God's hands regarding these two areas. Because I believe church is therapy. Church is therapy. We're not talking about the highfalutin things now. We're dealing with real-life situations. And I believe that um, the Lord wants to do work in our minds, in our lives. And I think at prayer meeting this morning, I think it was um, me was saying, today's not going to be sexy, but it's going to be an encounter with him in areas that matter, in areas that can make or break our lives going forwards.